Jim Douglas was back at work yesterday, adding another premium piece to the puzzle. But what does it all mean for the Jets' draft plans at 10th overall? We'll investigate uh, at post Hassan Reddick trade. Let's roll on Boy Green Daily. Zoinks. It is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Guardians. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is on the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gaston Sikama, baby, for me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I'm, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gas darn bananas. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Ashton Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to Boy Green Daily, a daily New York Jets video show live every single day at 7.30 in the morning, also available wherever you get your podcast at 7.30 as well. We have Boy Green meets Woody, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 o'clock, and the occasional surprise live stream, which, by the way, happened last night. Thank you to everyone who joined a two-and-a-half-hour live stream. The Super Chats, the memberships, you people are crazy. So thank you to everyone who joined late uh, yesterday for all that action, but we've reached the weekend and some of your favorite or not so favorite segments is uh, coming up here on the show. It is some hop on pop, a future embarrassing segment, some Reddick love and discussion and all that chatter, but let's bring him in. My father. There's no Darth Vader. No impossible. No, this guy is my father. It is confirmed. And uh, like, a lot of you people say my brother, but no, my father, but uh, nonetheless, I'm glad we got the family tree figured out. Let's bring him in. Paul Esden Sr. here on the program. Hey, now. Good morning, Jets Nation. Yeah, which uh, uh, I don't think you need a question mark in your byline there. And, and for those who are just listening, it says Paul Esden Sr., your name, of course. Uh, we've got double headlines here. And then under it, it says Jets offseason champs question mark. But I think it's time we put an exclamation point because Joe Douglas was putting in work. <laughs> Joe Douglas, Stone Cold Joe Douglas, was at work yesterday, huh? Okay, all right, all right. I know you're a glass 99% full kind of guy, but let's yeah. pump the brakes, pump the brakes. And so they have the potential to be the offseason champions. However, yeah. however, uh, and I was gonna, we'll get to this later. However, we got to get through that little event in April 1st and how they do. Historically mm. speaking, uh, historically speaking, right, the Jets in the draft, they've had some good times. It's yeah. been the worst. It's been the best of times. It's been the worst of times. Okay, Sticks. Uh, All right. So, uh, yeah, not often you get to quote Charles Dickens on the Boy Green Daily Show. Tale, yeah, of, Tale of Two Cities. So my hope is it's the best of times, and we can talk about that later. Now, what does it look like for the draft based on some of the signings they've done, et cetera, et cetera. So they are there, and it's theirs for the taking if they make the right moves uh, going forward. Yeah, well, I won't just assume that everyone's seen it, so I'm sure a lot of you have, but Hassan Reddick, the former Philadelphia Eagles pass rusher extraordinaire, was traded to the New York Jets for a conditional 2026, which, by the way, is three drafts from now, a 2026 conditional third, which, by the way, is the furthest uh, the Jets are allowed to send a pick from. You can only control, in the NFL anyway, three drafts out, and that includes the current one that we're in. Uh, so a 2026 third that's conditional and can turn into a second if two things happen, not just one or the other, both have to happen. It is 10 plus sacks for Hassan Reddick this year and playing above 67 and a half percent 
of the snaps, which as we discussed uh, yesterday, even some of the Jets best defenders uh, from a pass rushing perspective didn't hit those numbers. Jermaine Johnson was at 66% of the snaps and JFM was at 55%. So it was apparently a very well negotiated number by Joe Douglas. So we'll see. Maybe Hassan Reddick breaks that because he had been playing north of that uh, in his Eagles days, but that'll be interesting. Plus the 10 plus X, which by the way, he has accomplished in four straight seasons. He is the fourth most sacks uh, of any player in the NFL over the last four years. So he is in elite category. There's no question about it. So a pick so far in the future, we can't even see it for a player that helps. Now the jets got better yesterday than they were the day before. Yeah, I'm with you. And I will tell you that if you look at the, you know, the experts, experts, they will, yep. they will say that Philadelphia uh, get the better of this draft. I read some stuff this morning. There are people out there that felt Philadelphia got an A grade for this trade and the Jets got an A minus. And I will tell them, I will tell you right now, okay. my stone cold lock. All right. Right. And uh, is the Jets move yesterday. Mm. And I'm terrible. I'm terrible with names. Help me out. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Reddick, what's his first name again? Yeah, Hassan. 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 Sorry, Hassan Reddick is going to be in run in the running. Has the potential to be in the running for the Defensive Player of the Year next year. Write it down. Lock well, it in. Okay. Four wow. years in a row, uh, double digit sacks. Right. Mm. He didn't just barely make it across the finish line like that loser we uh, let the eagle sign. Right. Oof. He's been there for four yeah. years in a row. He's averaged the output. That the person that walked out the door, right? Mm. It is a win for the Jets. I'm telling you that with the Jets defensive team around him, he will be, he will have the opportunity uh to have that impact, potentially be a defensive player of the year. That's the bad news is um it's unlikely that he'll be playing for the Jets in 2025. Uh, but he is playing for the Jets for 2024. We're the reason the Eagles, the Eagles are not dumb. Well, they are. I mean, let's be honest. But the, the reason the Eagles let him go for almost nothing yeah, uh, is they didn't want to pay him long term, right? And he was going to be asked for a lot more compensation than uh, barely 10 sack man that they signed. And that was mm -hmm. a lot. And so uh, that's the only, the bad, the downside is I don't see him playing for the Jets in 2025. The upside is he's going to be a significant contributor and lead the league in sacks, has a potential to lead the league in the sacks or be in the top couple, top three in the sacks with the other Jets defense around him. So win for the Jets. I really don't understand some of the cap breakdown. I know the Eagles were responsible for the $1 million roster bonus. The other part Correct. that confuses me is I something I read said the Jets are responsible for about 14 million, but I know his total draft cap hit was around 21 or 2 million. So are the Eagles yeah. having to pick up that other six or eight or whatever it is? Yes. From what we understand from the contract structure, again, uh, there was, you know, the trade happens and everyone's trying to scramble to find the details. Uh, Hassan Reddick was owed a $1 million roster bonus in March. They kicked it to April to try to, in theory, extend the trade window. But part of the Jets and Eagles trade negotiation was, Eagles, you're still fronting that $1 million. And they're like, okay. And the Jets are taking on the base salary, which is that $14, $14.5 million. So they're taking on that. The cap hit is on the Eagles to deal with. So uh, they'll have whatever that leftover is. So that's that has to be some form of a signing bonus or workout bonus. He was already owed that has been taken care of already. So the Jets will owe him for his base salary, it looks like, uh, for this season, which, like I said, is in that $14 ish range uh, for okay. the year. Now, that's, the one thing – yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's the missing piece, right? That makes yeah. it – like, I, I don't want to rant uh, yeah. about something that I wasn't sure about. If that's no, true, no, right, I understand. $14 million, uh, there's no way the Eagles got the better end of this deal, right? We've got a, a proven – defensive leader uh with you know multiple double digit sack seasons in a row four he's coming on to a better defense than he left and he's gonna overproduce on those numbers that's what so i agree it was it's a win 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 the downside and again so it's 2026 who knows who cares right yeah but at the end of the day what what is going to be is there's no no way in my opinion 
that he's going to be a New York football jet in 2025. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, so that's the interesting point to dissect here. So right now, as it is, he is on the last year of his deal, which is that uh, money we talked about. And if the Jets just allowed him to play that out and then they they lose him potentially in 2025, as you're suggesting, they could get a comp pick in the future because he signed some big money deal with someone else. The Jets get a comp pick a year from then. Now, here's the thing. It's still up in the air. There's been two or three insiders that have reported that the Jets plan on extending Hassan Reddick this offseason on a long term deal. As So not part of the trade. The trade's already happened. But that they will extend him. That was uh, Mike Garofolo said that they uh, hope to work that out. And then there was uh, another uh, Jordan Schultz, NFL insider for Bleach Report, who also added in. He said he would not be surprised if a long-term deal is hammered out. So that would keep him here uh, beyond the season. But as it stands right now, he's not signed long-term, obviously. So it will be an interesting play. Did the Jets, just as a contender, say, hey, we have a hired mercenary for one year. We gave up who gives a flying hoot pick in the future, and let's go for it. And if he leaves, whatever. We're an awesome defense. We can afford to lose him. You can't miss what you didn't have. We didn't have him last year anyway. And if he is crazy, let's say he has 20 sacks. I'm making that up. You can franchise tag him then. You say, okay, well, we got to keep this guy. And then you figure it out, tag and trade or do something crazy uh, from that standpoint. So, yeah, we will see. Right now, it's just that last year, but there has been a little bit of early buzz that they might extend him long term yeah and i'll tell you that uh, i'm glad you got to where i was going so thank you uh i would tell you that um that's exactly it i think it would be a mistake uh to rework his contract this off season okay let him let him overproduce in the contract year let him overproduce and then we hold the cards on the tagging right and i would tell you that you know, at some point, this is what the Cowboys face. This is why Tyron Smith is a New York Jet. You cannot pay everybody premium dollar. And what you're going to have to pay Sauce, what you're already playing, paying Quentin and CJ. So bottom line is, you know, this is a, a incredibly inexpensive rental. And we held the cards at the end of the day to maybe tag him uh, at the end of the year after we see, right? Long-term sure. contract for a, going into 2025, a 31-year-old doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, getting a double, a multi-year, double-digit sack guy with this defense to make this push for $14 million, sign me up every day, and then do not. It'd be hopefully they don't. I'm giving them a lot of credit uh, for the moves they made. To me, it's a big mistake right to to rework the deal restructure the deal and kick it down the the road so i I would not do that although i was going to get to it later with some of the moves that the jets have been making yeah i think beyond the draft some of the needs they fill in the draft again i'm jumping ahead of myself i would be working on you know the sauce gardener contract now if we get the draft what we need out of the draft and we have some money left to play around with. Let's let's piecemeal. Let's go after, you know, uh, we got to get our wide receiver locked in, quarterback locked in. Let's get one of them locked in in 2024 and then save the other for down the road. That's my thoughts. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, that is an ineligible thing. They won't be able to. Uh, we have to wait until the new CBA says after – a rookie contract is played three years out. So Sauce, Garrett, Jermaine, all those guys have to play out this season before they're even allowed to negotiate. But to your point, what they can do is set it up and go, whoa, we got to we gotta save a few shekels here because like <clears throat> Sauce Gardner is probably going to be the new highest paid corner in football. We were looking at it last night because it came up. The highest paid corner in football right now is at $21 million. Sauce is going to clear that. He will be – We'll wait and see a year from now to see what other cornerback deals happen. But he's going to be the new highest paid corner in football. And right to your point, it would behoove them to do it at the earliest point, which would be the beginning of the 2025 offseason. And the three guys become eligible. Well, technically four uh, become eligible in that year. That'll be Brees Hall, uh, the running back, Jermaine Johnson, the pass rusher, Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver, and Sauce Gardner, the corner. All four of those will immediately all become eligible next year. And Joe Douglas is like, okay, who are we banging out here first? There's going to there's gonna be a lot of big boy decisions that have to be made, uh, but uh, they can officially be made uh, a year from now. Yeah, yeah one yeah, other so thing. Yeah, go ahead. Right, 
No, no. The only part I, I was going to save this for later, but because someone asked a question about it, uh, I did want to highlight this. Okay, the comments are coming in crazy. So, guys, keep those coming, and uh, we'll get to those uh, throughout the show. Uh, a lot of people have had split opinions on what this means for Will McDonald, who was the number 15 overall pick last year uh, in the first round. Uh, we have uh, G-Man on uh, Facebook, our Heavy on Jets Facebook page. Thank you to the Heavy Overlord for supporting the show. Love the move, but will this slow down McDonald's development as a question? Because now, if you count the rotation of pass rushers, in no particular order, you have Jermaine Johnson, you have John Franklin Myers, you have Hassan Reddick. Will McDonald's, what, fourth in the rotation as it stands right now, and who knows what other moves potentially they could make. So what is your initial take, Pop, that McDonald's, who played the fewest amount of snaps for a Jets first-rounder since Vernon Golston last year, now is now once again in a very heavy rotation. We'll see kind of where he stands in the mix. Uh, is this good news or bad news that Reddick is in? Yeah, I will tell you that um, we use the word a lot uh, on mm -hmm. this show and about development, whether it's Zach Wilson or McDonald's. It's not right. Some of these positions you can develop, you know, into an offensive lineman. You're you're a, a you know a, a corn fed guy from Nebraska. You can teach them some tricks about being an offensive lineman. Okay, uh, a pass rusher. There's a few techniques you can use, but I'm not worried about developing a busted first round draft pick. Oh, wow. Right. So maybe he's going to develop. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. But he needs to show it in training camp and he earn his spot in the rotation. Uh, he clearly did not own it. You know, someone made a comment. I. The other thing about Reddick, the other benefit is this and bad news for McDonald, right? Reddick plays football he wasn't a come in every once in a while like our departed guest right he played north uh just close to 70 percent of the defensive snaps right and uh unlike our departed friend he likes tackling and defending the run so yeah by the way know, real quick just to your yeah, point here are his percentages over the last three years this is Hassan Reddick. 83% of the snaps, 74%, 74%. So he's in there all the time. You're right. He's in there all the time. Right. To me, you're that that rookie. And I'll tell you, he's McDonald is closer to being the next Vernon Golston than he uh, is the next Hassan Reddick. It's just the facts. It's yeah. just the facts. Right. Hmm. Bro, pull up his stats. How many tackles okay. did he have last year? What's the closest tackles, he got? To I'm not sure, out? but uh, What's sacks. He, he had like this? three sacks or something. Yeah. Yeah. On the Jets defense. Right. You cannot discount that. You can't walk around saying the Jets have an elite defense. And then when somebody pops off the sack, oh, look, this guy's phenomenal. He's got three sacks because he was on the Jets defense. Because you can't double team four people that are coming to eat the quarterback's lunch. Right. You can't double team them all. So Will McDonald's like, oh, my God, there's nobody blocking me. Maybe I can go tackle the quarterback. So we can't extrapolate those numbers, what you're saying. So three sacks on 19% of the snaps. I can't go, wow, if you go this, 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 all of a sudden he has 1,000 sacks. So you're saying yes, that's... You're, you're, you're historically op level of optimism that nobody else has in the face of the planet Earth. Right. There's no extrapolation there, right? Yeah, he got nine percent. He got nineteen percent. It's not like uh, it's not like our moron offensive coordinator. You know that guy in the backfield can catch a ball. <laughs> no, it's it's not that they recognize he's in nineteen percent of the time because that's what he's earned. That's what he brings to the table. And there's going to yeah. be less food on the table. He's going to get fewer scraps after the Sasan Reddick signing. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go the opposite way on this. I think it's great news for McDonald because now with the rot the rotations rotation, I you know while those are the snap percentages for Reddick over the last three years, the Jets defense just has a number. Jermaine, who came off this, who had obviously this sophomore awesome season that he did last year, he only played in 66 percent of the snaps. That's the Jets scheme. So no matter how good you are, Quinnen, Jermaine, whoever. They have a limit on the snaps because they believe to their foundation that it keeps you fresh. And so I believe Hassan Reddick's numbers will bump down a little bit. Maybe they'll stay the same, but I believe they're going to bump down into the 60s. So we'll see whatever that is. Is that 65, 68? Who knows? But I believe it's going to be dropped down a few. You lost Carl Lawson. He's gone. 
Uh, who knows where Michael Clemens is going to fit in the snap rotation. Uh, Bryce Huff, obviously his snaps are available. So I think there's going to be plenty of meat on the bone for old Will McDonald. And there's going to be reps where it's Will McDonald wide nine. It's going to be on the opposite side. Uh, Hassan Reddick wide nine. Quinnen on the field and offensive line is going to be like, oh boy, what are we doing here? And I will assume they're not going to double team Will McDonald, the no-name kid that no one knows about yet. So he will have an opportunity to prove himself in favorable one-on-one situations with the crazy athleticism and spin moves and all this, all these things this young buck has in his uh, tool chest. I'll be curious to see if he could take advantage of it. If he can't, okay, maybe that's a glaring red flag in the middle of next season. But if he can, especially with the Jets, in theory, having a lot more leads with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, that's a part I'm pretty excited about with uh, with this young man and Will McDonald. So we'll see what this kid truly has with uh, you know more opportunities in 2024. Yeah, and I'll tell you this, right? What we don't often think about is most teams, right, mm-hmm. trot out the same five offensive linemen snap after snap after snap. The ability to rotate the defensive lane. The Will McDonald comes in. He's not coming in against if when they played the Cowboys uh, a first snap Tyron Smith. He's coming in on a 47th snap Tyron Smith, and he's fresh. I will yes. tell you that I, I think there is that opportunity that you bring him in the fresh, the speed. You know that he's been sitting there warming up on the stationary bike. I think there's value there. But I would tell you we would be talking a lot more about the quality of the pick of Will McDonald and. Uh, and our, our, our selection of him, if it wasn't from the Aaron Rodgers, right? That pick, the new, there's only so much news feed for the news feed, right? And Will McDonald gets a pass. We don't talk about that pick a lot because of the crazy train wreck that the Jets season was last year. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, that's a very blunt way to put it, but I do think it's true. Uh, so, again, I'm excited for what this can be as long as Rodgers stays healthy because it unlocks everything else. It unlocks another ga- level to Garrett's game, the pass rushers, the defense, who I thought was already really good last year, and if they have a competent offense. So that's the thing that I say, that, boy, if you're just super conservative and just say, wow, Aaron Rodgers coming in will make this a top 15 offense. Average, league average, 32 teams top 15 that seems like a reasonable thing to say and if it is they were 32nd last year so we go from 32nd to 15 that's a 17 team jump and if the defense is who basically has all the same pieces outside of Bryce Huff and we still don't have the draft yet I kind of like the chances of how how dramatic of a leap potentially uh, the Jets can make so let's uh, bring this to the headline of the video make sure we get this in here which what does this mean for the Jets in the first round? We were talking about it in pre-production. I told you that there was a fear among Jet fans that, oh boy, is there any way they go pass rusher in the first round because the Jets aggressively pursued Jadavion Clowney, had him in for, as Joe Douglas called it, an outstanding visit, quote unquote. He was in his office for an hour plus, apparently, with Clowney on top of uh, his visit to the Jets. Uh, Shaq Barrett revealed the other free agent pass rusher ended up signing with the Dolphins said he was signing with the Jets until the very last second the Dolphins swooped in and the Jets obviously pivoted here to Reddick. It seems to eliminate the very minuscule chance that they would have taken a pass rusher in the first round. So now it kind of feels like it's wide receiver or offensive line. Uh, I'd be surprised almost by any other pick based on everything that we've seen thus far uh, this off season. Yeah, I'm with you, <laughs> but I'll just briefly, right. To me, yeah. the Jets won, right? It is. It it doesn't seem that way. It doesn't look that way. But if you think about it, it is that way, right? Hassan Reddick is a better signing than Clowney. He's a better signing than uh, Shaquille uh, Barrett, right? He's a better yeah. signing. His stats are better. What well, only and his stats are better by a landslide than the Clownster, right? Go back and look at their stats. Uh, I'm not positive that uh, Clowney has ever had, and if he's had, he's only had one double-digit sack season. He's had he's zero. What's he had? That's he's right only off. been close. He's That's only right. had nines and nine and a half four times in his career. So he's been right. close, but never has gotten it. Right. And so you look at these stats. We got the best player of the three. The downside, <clears throat> the downside is, is the contract. But we clearly got the best of the three uh, by being last in line. But uh, so... I think it's the right move to go the draft. That's the question mark for me. That's yeah. 
hell you make it to being the offseason champions is the draft. You cannot do a bunch of things. There's a bunch of things they cannot do. There's a bunch of things you can do, but you cannot do. I agree with you. They, there's, they, they still have needs. They've done an amazing job, and I can't believe it. Somebody, uh, Joe Douglas's wife, really needs to validate proof of life that this is not some other buddy in 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 a suit uh, disguising himself. So we really need to understand that we need to have there's needs to fill needs on offense, needs on offensive line. We still need that developmental quarterback. We cannot take the 24, 24 version of Will McDonald, right? We cannot, right? The yes. needs are bat, third developmental quarterback, wide receiver. Right, don't forget our boy from Georgia, right? You didn't mention. Yeah, tight see, end. thank you for calling that out. I just want to say, folks, I'm an idiot, obviously. Okay, there, there are three things that I believe that's valid. That's yes, valid. So, yeah. So, uh, thank you for you saying that. And everyone yelling in the chat, Paul, you've been on the Brock Bowers train for months. I'm like, I, I'm so sorry. Yes. So, tight end. I, I meant pass catcher, but I didn't say it appropriately. So the three things I could see the Jets taking a 10th overall it, it, outside of a trade, maybe, but but even still, I think the positions would be the same, is tight end Brock Bowers, of course. One of the res, one of the receivers, whether it's one of the top three or you trade back and get somebody, people have brought up Vlad McConkey, people have brought up Brian Thomas Jr., whoever your guy is, or one of the top three, Malik Neighbors out of LSU, Marvin Harrison Jr., of course, uh, of uh, f- his uh, famed father, and then, of course, uh, you also have Roma Dunze out of Washington or one of the insert a million offensive linemen if you have a preference uh, for one of those guys. So, uh, yes, I think those are the three areas. So I'm an idiot. Yes, I apologize. Brock Bowers, of course, is in the conversation, even maybe more so now than ever. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm good moving on from that because that's not really new news to me. Um, but right. anyways, the uh, the moron part. But uh, I, anyway. I got that. Yeah, I picked that up. Yeah. yeah. A- after the draft, if we don't walk away with that wide receiver – two to three offensive linemen. We've done phenomenal work with the starting five, right? We This is the draft to provide the bench strength. And this is the draft to draft the quarterback of the future. Because again, right, our quarterback room is not the quarterback of the future. We have them both on a one to three year rental, you know, a best case scenario. We cannot wait. We need to start acting like the Jets of the future and not the Jets of the past get that quarterback of the future. There's a lot of nuggets and diamonds in the rough in the quarterback room. Both, and again, we're looking. We don't need the number one receiver. We don't need uh, the best offensive lineman, although if Joel is available, we obviously take him. But we need, right, how many times, how many starting offensive linemen did each team play in the NFL? We need that backup. We need that bench strength. Right. Mm-hmm. We've satisfied most demands on the defensive side of the ball by restructuring sure. and signing. So it's really linemen, quarterback and weapons. Right. That's the key. Yeah, we're kind of, yeah, if I'm cherry picking, you know, we have to figure out who the third safety is. Does Ashton Davis come back because he doesn't find the market in free agency? Is he that third safety? Do the Jets go buck wild and really the safety market continues to die and they could go to one of those big names? I know everyone loves Justin Simmons and just say, hey, we don't have a lot of money left, obviously, with all the moves they've made. There might be a future restructures here or there. But, hey, do you want to join this already crazy defense and hop on for the ride and like Hassan Reddick, let's say if he doesn't get extended, hey, Next year, you, you kill it with us, and you go get paid by somebody else or us. And then he's like, all right, why not? And he jumps on. Maybe there's that. And then maybe another interior defense alignment you could throw in. They already are pretty – I had them nine deep when I made my graphic last night of kind of putting a custom graphic of all of them together. And you're like, whoa, okay, look at all these guys. They could probably use one more. Maybe that comes in the draft as well. But we're cherry-picking. The offensive side are all the things you said – depth at tackle guard center quite frankly all of them they still don't have a backup center on the roster unless you count uh Wes Schweitzer uh wide receiver depth uh back at long-term quarterback so yeah there's still a few more things but thankfully they have uh, seven picks in this draft uh to uh potentially go through uh any of those before you get to any other segments you may have pre put together i suppose is there any other jets items you want to get to uh i see people asking to call in we'll handle that in a little bit after uh, my dad goes through his segment if uh my father would like those doors open we will but uh is there any other jets things we missed you wanted to address before we go anywhere else uh no i'd say there's a lot of optimism around 
we really need to be analyzing our, our draft board, dissecting these quarterbacks of the future, right? You get past that top tier back, the top tier, right? Really evaluate the talent when, he, when we think it's going to be available, right? And then that will help us decide, do we stay at 10? What does it look like? We leave our options open to trade back as the quarterback we feel that's our, you know, the third guy that's developing. But by the way, our quarterback room cannot consist of Zach Wilson in it. I've heard some ridiculous ramblings by Woody Moron, but uh, we cannot bring Zach Wilson back. But that's all I have. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I will just uh, address the elephant in the room. I believe it was because Woody went the opposite way in a bad way at NFL honors, the award show, he made a, a Zach Wilson joke. Well, we definitely need a backup quarterback. We're going to have one last year. And everyone's like, Oh, okay. So he just dunked on Zach Wilson and, and thus any trade value he had was kind of like, Oh yeah. His owner just dunked on him. Now fast forward to the NFL owners meeting that just happened uh, this past week. And he goes, Oh no, no, no. Valuable asset. Zach Wilson is uh, Hey, we're not trading him. We ain't cutting him. Like oh, he's staying if we're not doing this. So yeah, I believe it's a lot of hoopla, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the things you're supposed to say, because like I said, I think ultimately to our, you say they need a developmental quarterback. I say when the draft gets here in less than a month, actually a month away, the draft will already be over. But uh, a month from now, when the jets inevitably select their quarterback and you have Aaron Rodgers, Tyrod Taylor, that rookie plus Zach Wilson, uh, yeah, Zach, you're kind of being a fourth wheel here, pal. We kind of already have yeah. things figured out. At that point, I believe he will either be uh, probably cut uh, as opposed to traded. But I'll give a shout out. I've still not seen the interview yet, Connor, so shame on me. But he had Adam Schefter on his uh, Jets podcast uh, yesterday. And one of the things I heard from Schefter is he feels pretty confident that the Jets will get something for Zach Wilson, whether that's draft day, some sort of a trade pick swap or something. He believes they will ultimately trade him and that they won't have to cut him. So we'll see if that ends up being true. Yeah, maybe maybe one of those cooling fans on the sidelines that did that for him. Ah, but, I, I, yeah, Woody, Woody pretended like he was trying to Jedi mind trick anybody. Like, I didn't really say that other thing. But that's like yeah. Patrick from SpongeBob trying to Jedi mind trick people after you've already let yeah. the cat out of the bag. Yeah, yeah. So not not great. Not uh, again. He probably could have used a better PR person to kind of organize that a little bit better. But hey, you know, uh, different strokes, different folks. So we'll see if Shefty's right on the uh, potential uh, uh, trade situation. All right, Father. Uh, I guess we've delayed enough. The great people want this. What I don't even know what this is about. So uh, that uh, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Um, so yes, uh, there's some sort of origin story. We have the embarrassing boy green segment, uh, every week around the show that you're on. So what origin story uh, do tell? Yeah. So, uh, this is, uh, an origin. This is actually an embarrassment on me, right? So this is embarrassment oh. on me. Oh boy. Story. And oh, boy. this is how you became boy green. Right? Wow. All right. That's it. As a lifelong Cowboys oh. fan, I will not say how long I've been a Cowboys fan. I will not say okay. how long I've been a Cowboys fan, but it's in excess of five decades. So I you see. can do some uh, you can do some math there. So I'm going to do an evolution, if you will, and oh. uh, hopefully, okay. hopefully uh, this works out. This little new this app. What is the name of this app? It's uh, uh, Streamyard. Streamyard. So let me see yeah. if I can do. Uh, stream okay. yard. So here we go. All right. I'm going to okay. stream my yard here. Let's go. All right. Okay. I'm not sure so what that means, this... but that sounds inappropriate. But go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Is it? It sounds, I guess it is inappropriate. So yeah. okay. I don't know what we're seeing. Are we seeing anything? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Let's try this. All right. Okay. That's right. All right. Here we go. My father versus technology. Yes. Wow, this All is right. a good episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, don't make me, uh, don't make me bitch slap you. All right, here we go. Okay. Hey, there you are. All right. Okay. All right. So as a lifelong Cowboys fan, yeah, you know, one of the greatest moments of my life, I was actually out to sea on a submarine. Okay. I was out to sea on a submarine. Uh, I don't know if you know, but when you're in a submarine, you, you don't get fresh food. Uh, you don't no fresh food. You get no correspondence. You don't get to talk to people. Uh, we didn't have email back then when I was mm -hmm. in the Navy. And yeah. so what you would get, you'd go on deployment for six months at a time. And uh, what you would get was a 
30 word, 30 word, just reflect on that. You get a 30 word message eight times in six months. That was a communication wow. to the outside world. Um, Does that include so, spaces? Uh, it seemed like it did. Okay. All right. So All right. I got, and then when you pulled in, if you were ever pulled into port, yes. uh, then you might get mail. So uh, I got this message uh, that it was a boy. I got that in a family gram. So very happy. Wow. I, uh, to know there was a boy and then, uh, and then oh, this is great, right? Paul Andrew Esden Jr. will be born, right? All the things we'll do together, you know, the <laughs> teach him how to ride a bike, tie sure. a shoelace. These are other stories for other times. Uh, yeah, ride a bike, just, yeah. tie a shoelace, whatever, uh, throw the football in the backyard with him. And for the rest of our lives, we would enjoy Cowboys games together. So I will continue on here. So that was the dream. Ah, that was yes. the dream. So here is where the dream started. Okay, go ahead. I'm right, waiting for you to uh, do something. Yeah, here not. we are. Wow. All right. Wow. So Look there is when I was filled with hope. You were born. <laughs> I was in the room when you were yes. born. Uh, I okay. cut the cord. Uh, mm -hmm. I was supporting your mother. She'll tell some story about how I was getting a hamburger when she was in labor. That's, you know, that may or may not be true. I but uh, here I was filled with hope. My aspirations of my namesake and, you know, and he was even wearing a sailor's outfit, although I never yeah. really wanted him to join the Navy. So there we were filled with well, hope. Well, quick time out before we move on. I just for audio only listeners, uh, the photo that's on the screen that my father is showing, he's got a whole slideshow presented. So appreciate the amount of effort and dedication that apparently went into the segment. I didn't ask him to do any of this, but uh, wow, really, really going deep here. It is a picture of me as a baby in a uh, baby sailor's outfit. And I am posing for the photo as if it is the 90s, which in fact, it was the 90s in this case with this photo. So, OK, yep. Uh, first one. Got it. Excellent. Yep. And so there you go. And okay. as time as time progressed. OK. Oh, wow. OK, uh, I, I got to do this. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. And then, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. As time progressed, he developed, not surprisingly, and he had on the path to being a badass MFer. And yeah. uh, here he is in the front with his brother in the back as, yes. uh, as he's on the way to being a 12th degree black belt in Taekwondo. Here he is. So, yeah, this again, is a. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, just for audio listeners, I'll keep trying to describe these photos the best of my ability. Um, that one that was uh, just on screen was me in Tang Sudo. This is uh, the art of the fist. You can also see that little logo on my chest there. That is a, that is a fist. That's my brother, Nicholas. You guys have never seen, but he's also, he is a YouTube uh, member of the Boy Green Super Fan Club. So I appreciate that, Nick. Uh, yeah, that's my brother. This is uh, me. I'm not sure the age. You'd be better at that. What's the age of this photo here? Uh, it was actually last week. Um, ah, that's good. Ah, there you are. And actually, uh, uh, just for the record, uh, Boy Green yeah. is the same height as it as it is. Ah, the oh, there they are. Wow, they they, uh, <laughs> they keep coming. But look, look at that look at that face. You can't zoom in there, yeah. but that uh, that tough face right there. Yeah. So Tang Sudo, my start of my martial arts career. Okay. Tang yeah. Sudo, and then unfortunately, okay. oh boy. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Unfortunately, or fortunately. Uh, there he is, the original G, OG, old goat. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. uh, he had the misfortune when we named Paul, Paul Andres and Jr. Yeah. Uh, and it became short for PJ. And my dad had a nickname for everybody. Yes. And uh, his nickname was PJ or Paul Jet. Paul Jet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sadly, yes. uh, that evolved into this. Yes. So real quick for the audio listeners, my uh, grandfather was just on the screen and uh, yeah, he was uh, he was the originator of the jet D a jet. I do still have that jersey in my closet as well. It does. It does not fit my fat body anymore, but it, it did at one time the jet a nickname. And now we have a picture of me at training camp with the Geno Smith jersey. Nice chain there. Backward snapback hat and autograph football in my hands. 
Wow, well, yeah, nice watch. That's very nice. Yeah, look at that. look at that bright young smile. That is a lot less beer. That's like a that's like a one on your razor, folks. That's a, that's a young young buck right there. Yes, and you can uh, you can estimate PJ's neck size as this was a choker chain for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I actually nice. skipped a picture. Of, oh, okay. Of the original playa, uh, and that. Oh is yeah, you did. did. I, I I missed this. This That's was okay. his high school. <laughs> This was his high school photo uh, on yeah. the way to uh, the prom. Look at that. And the nice pseudo flat top. Yeah, and this the also, Fresh Prince uh, of Bel-Air remember, haircut. Yeah. This is a spinner chain. It doesn't actually show very well on the thing. This also was a choker that. But um, this is a spinner chain uh, and his class picture and the the uh, the world's weakest quarterback arm jersey. Oh, which I will share that story too. So on screen right now is again, a school picture. It is me with a flat top. Again, I was trying to go for uh, Will Smith and fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You see a nice, uh, a sun kissed tan there. Very nice. Shout out to my Puerto Rican heritage. Uh, yeah. We got the spinner chain there and I'm wearing one of my original jet jerseys. Also still have that for my future child. That is Chad Pennington, baby. Number 10 spinner. A lot of swag here. Oh yeah. Those are the, that was uh, some original jet Jersey days. Very nice. Yes. Yes. And, and one of the best, you know, Madden sometimes puts quotes on from an Oh yes. And I'm sure as Jets fans. Right. And every time we play PJ and I've been playing Madden for decades. Yes. And, uh, when he played with Chad Pennington, I don't remember who the announcer is. It might've been. John oh, Madden I do. Yeah. It uh, was John they, Madden. Yeah. And he's like, and it all, oh, uh, the arm on this guy is is not very good. Yeah, yeah. There's Let me only... add some more here. Every time I threw a 10-yard pass, John Madden is the voice. I don't know what Madden this is. But he's like, ah, you know, not... he, he's really, like, pushing through perseverance despite not having the strongest arm in the world. I'd be like, well, J and he'd say it, like, a thousand times during a game. Like, unnecessarily. Oh. I'm playing my dad, Madden. It's Jets, Cowboys, right? Chad Pinch him. I'm like, huh! 10 yard pass, five yard slam. Oh boy, there you go, kiddo. Not bad for someone who's got the weakest arm in history. It was like, why did he record all of these lines just destroying Chad Pennington for seemingly no reason? So, yes, uh, I, I would say I remember those family, but I do not. So, John Madden, God rest your soul. But what the hell, man? What was going on there? Yeah, so this was tough times for me. Uh, but despite okay. that, I've got a few pictures. Uh, despite oh, that, yeah. here's a, uh, here's, Boy Green and I at the Giants, Jets, Jets, Cowboys yeah, nice. game back in uh, uh, 2019. 2019. So we were on yes. location outside of MetLife. And, yes. And I will. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say for those who are, don't see it, we're in front of the ESPN 98.7. There's kind of like a little booth. So shout out to Ty Butler as well for his uh, his radio station. They don't have the control of the Jets anymore, sadly. But yeah, this is me and my dad. My dad's holding an ESPN microphone. I've got a Jets ball. We're both in our full Jets and Cowboys gear, respectively. And this is just, again, obviously my dad and I were going to the Jets-Cowboys game no matter what. But how it played out, thank goodness, this was Sam Darnold's first game back. I believe it was from mononucleosis. Uh, it was week six. But if he didn't come back, I would have had a uh, – thankfully, I don't have a Luke Falk jersey, but that's what would, would have been the one I had to trot out. So thank goodness. Randomly, it just kind of worked out that way with uh, – we had bought these tickets, obviously, way in advance. We didn't just randomly decide to go to this game. That Sam Darnold finally just came back for that game, and it was uh, – yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep, and then I'll just show – Right. This is this is uh, what look at that. Uh, this is whoop, what the hell happened. Nope. All right. OK. Yep. That's all right. I cut the I cut, cut the close the wrong one out there. Yep. There you go. And then just. Uh, yep. 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 All right. Yep. And so this is yep. on. We are on the way to Jets training camp. And there is a jersey that I clearly have on Jets jersey, Jets hat. And uh, I that is not I'm not sure whose jersey it is. I don't think that's Plaxico. Uh, Oh, Plaxico Burris. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Which I still have in the closet. And I will say for people that are watching, because a lot of people have asked, like, can we see your dad in some Jets gear? Well, there you go. He's right there. That is me and my father. That's in our, uh, it's our uh, dining room or kitchen, rather, excuse me. Uh, it's our kitchen of our other house in Oswego that we all lived in together before I moved out on my own. And we used to drive up to SUNY Cortland, of course, the greatest memories of all time. 
of getting to go up there when the Jets made that partnership agreement with SUNY Cortland. We went every year that they were here. And, uh, and they were at a couple of different, sometimes they're in the football stadium side and sometimes they're on the stand side on the other side, but either way, it was uh, super cool. That's my San Antonio Holmes Jersey, which by the way, randomly uh, a- ended up getting signed by San Antonio. I got to run into San Antonio. That's one of my prized uh, memorabilia items that I have. He was walking by himself. I'm walking by myself go, Holy friggin' crap, San Antonio Holmes. And he signed my jersey, talked to me for like five minutes. Really cool. So, yeah. So, shout out to my pops for taking me out to uh, SUNY Cortland for the uh, Jets training camp. All right. Two more quick pictures. and uh, Sure. Yeah. I okay. had to uh, – <laughs> this is the most embarrassing photo I have of PJ. Oh, oh boy. Right. Wow. Very happy for some reason. Uh, this was mm. not Photoshopped. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I'll, I'll move on from this photo. Well, I would just say for the audio listeners, it is a picture of me in front of a Zach Wilson jersey, which, by the way, I have to get that video ready because inevitably Zach Wilson will not be a part of this team. But I plan on going through my closet of every Jets jersey that I have. And and uh, basically the joke would be, ah, where's that franchise quarterback? Where is he? Uh, no, 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 no. And unfortunately, I'll be saying no a lot because of all the Jet quarterback jerseys I have in my closet. And hopefully we finally land on one. But uh, there you are. Yeah, Zach Wilson, I th- number two overall pick. Number two jersey, number one in our hearts. We thought he was the guy, he not the guy, as uh, we found out. Yeah, not the guy. Yeah. All right, two more quick ones. Okay. This is uh, this is one of oh, uh, wow. my retirement, and uh, yes, there you go. That's uh, there's yeah. boy green right there, and this is exact, almost exactly sixteen <laughs> years ago. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's that's just about. And by the way, for folks, again, I'll say for audio listeners that uh, that is Sergeant Esden, and I'm referencing myself. I was in JRTC in South Carolina. Uh, my dad retired for a day. He retired from the Navy in 2008 and then ended up moving into his next career field. And uh, yeah, that is me in my JRTC uniform. You see the orange uh, stripe down there. That is uh, honor guard. I'm uh, under or around my right shoulder. I was a sergeant in JRTC. And it tells you the funny things that happen in life. The only reason I'm even doing this show right now is my father ends up moving to Oswego, New York. There's no JRTC up here, so I can't continue it. So I go into a different career path. I was totally my father, who, by the way, uh, salute to your service. And thank you, NY Jets FL, for saying that. Let me uh, get this comment up here that uh, my dad spent 20 years in the United States Navy. And uh, I remember at the retirement, <clears throat> a couple of my dad's buddies came over to me. And uh, of course, the uniform I'm wearing, although it's JRTC, I don't know if there's a in some other part of the country, a Navy version. But he said, oh, boy, uh, you're it looks like you're going to be joining the wrong rank, son. They kept telling me because uh, it looked like I was destined uh, for the Army. But we come up here and there's no JRTC, so I don't go to the Army and uh, I end up doing sports talk radio instead. So uh, awesome. Salute. Yeah, I appreciate all the love that's over here of everybody uh, that are saying it. Yes, yes. I, we we lived. My father no longer lives in Oswego, but I still live in Oswego and I work in Syracuse to the radio station for the people that are asking. But yeah, there's no JRTC up here. So I just jumped into a different career or else if we would have stayed down there, just like my brother joined the Marines, my father was in the Navy. I thought I was just going to continue the line of going into the armed service. So uh, the armed forces rather. So that's where I thought I was going to go. But hey, everything happens for a reason, I guess. All right. And then uh, the last one. Yeah, is uh, really just so the reason to wrap it up, the reason that boy green is boy green is uh, the old goat. And this is a picture of the three of us from four years ago. So shout out to the OG. Yeah, and that is a picture of uh, three generations of Esden right there in the middle is my grandfather. God rest his soul. Uh, One of the best human beings, uh, the, uh, the best human being I've ever had the pleasure of uh of be having the honor and pleasure of being around in my life and then to the left is my father and then to the right the big bearded guy uh is uh boy green and uh, all of our fists up and celebrating and hugging and love and uh and uh everything else so yeah that's awesome 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 right. powerful stuff there dad wow you had a whole presentation you had a laser pointer you had a yeah, little bit of hand movement wow yeah wow all that right. was it so, yeah, so you said that at the beginning that this was an origin story that you're like, wow, uh, I saw this cowboy thing happening. The cowboy thing, you know, only lasted a, a very small period of time. So uh, 
the now what is it just a lot of regret there father what am i supposed to be boy blue daily right now is that what uh, we're supposed to be talking about the you know yeah yeah it, boy blue daily right now yeah it's just morning regrets when you you know like in college when you wake up and you have to chew your arm off instead of waking up the person beside you you know what i'm talking about well i'll just say this dad because i i, I want to say you're welcome right here because you know let's be honest if it was boy blue daily right now i mean what does all in even mean for the cowboys what have they done like you're you should you're welcome because the jets and being on this jet show all in is these kind of moves that are happening so i want to give you a proper showing here of what all in supposed to look like hassan reddick tyron smith mike williams so i again if we we're doing a cowboy show it'd be a lot more boring it wouldn't have lasted this long that's for sure because there'd be no moves to be breaking down so you're welcome yeah yeah well we could run the footage from the jets uh super bowl win except they didn't have cameras back then but let's oh, move on okay that's uh that's it yeah a little bit of uh, black and white there okay dad do you want to wrap up or do you want me to open up the phone lines uh, we can uh, open up for a couple. Um, okay. All right. All right, people, I'll be putting this in the pinned comment on YouTube. If you're watching live, feel free uh, to take advantage. I'll be doing that as we speak right now. And uh, that'll be the pinned comment here uh, momentarily. So just uh, be patient with me as I uh, put this up here for a second. But I will thank my father for his extracurricular activities there. And I'm putting this in now video call in link there you are it is now in the chat everybody so feel free if you'd like to i heard a few people asking earlier it is now the pinned message on youtube so uh, feel free guys if you'd like and we'll take in a, a few callers or a few questions comments super chats uh, feel free to throw those in there and uh, we'll answer a few before we wrap up here uh, on a Saturday, but they, oh, wow. Okay. We're immediately getting people. Oh boy. Oh, wow. We're good. We're getting uh, All right. This is uh busy, busy. Okay. So let's, uh, I will be patient. Everybody who's jumping in here. We'll go one by one here. Uh, we got Johnny here first. So, uh, Johnny joins on the show with his uh, jets hat. Probably there. Very nice. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Mr. Asden. Hey, uh, first and foremost, man, thank you for your service. Really do uh, appreciate it, man. So that's dope, man. I live in a in a military community, so well, I live in Virginia Beach. So if you're in the Navy, it's a big Navy town over here. Yeah, well. uh, Boy Green was born in Portsmouth, Virginia. So, oh yeah, yep, yep. My uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no Portsmouth very well. Uh, Portsmouth Navy uh, Naval Hospital, right? No, it. Yeah, uh, that's where he was born. Oh, that's cool, man. Small world. Yeah. Hey, and we so, were, what was that? Did, was that just a vacation dad? Or was that like actually a stop on the trip for Virginia beach? When we did that entire run of action, was that just yeah, us so, on vacation or is that, uh, did we have some stops there or, or that was just your work where you worked, right? Yeah. So I was stationed in, uh, Virginia twice, once, uh, when you were born. And then I went back right before I retired uh, and did that again. You stayed in South Carolina with your mother as I was spending the last two years before I retired. So, right. Yeah, twice, once go. in, once in Portsmouth and once in Norfolk, uh, right there at the end of my career. Okay. Very nice. So my question is, um, I'm not gonna talk about the jets cause you know, we're awesome already, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did say to Boy Green yesterday, I was like, hey, man, when your dad comes on, I wanted to ask him about the Riz, right? So how was it when Boy Green was young bringing the lovely ladies of the night over to the house? How did he, like, how was his game? How did he bag them? Did he have any game? Because, I mean, I saw the chain, right? So I, I saw that. I saw the high top. Right. Well, try yeah. to get the high top on there. So <laughs> the grip was there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, factually, um, uh, he was slow to the game, uh, but he eventually joined the game uh, later in life. And then uh, he tried uh, just one uh, that we should probably say this for a different time. But there was at least one occasion where I thought I was going to uh, have to leave the room as he was on the couch. Oh with this, boy! Uh, with this, this girl, woman, whatever she was, and uh, I was like, I almost had to, you know, use the. Uh... Hey, uh, your mother and I are sitting right here. Uh, 
we do not need you to uh, do any carnal actions. But uh, yes, so he was slow to the game, and then he didn't uh, understand uh, proper etiquette. Uh, I would have preferred if he had gone to his room as opposed to trying to demonstrate his technique in the living room. Yeah. Okay. So now, now the story's out there. I just got to, so my father and mother, we're in the living room. Okay. My father and mother, we're watching like Hell's Kitchen. I'm pretty sure I remember the show. We're watching like Hell's Kitchen. Me and the lovely are sitting on the couch. Okay. So it's my dad's on his own couch. My mom's on her couch. Me and the girl on another couch. We're just sitting like normal people at first. And she whispers to me, hey, do you just want to lay down? That'd be like easier to see everything. And so I'm like, mm, okay, that seems to make sense, I guess. So we're laying down. All of a sudden she starts kissing me. And I'm like, oh boy. And then, yeah, then all of a sudden turned to this crazy makeup. just like they weren't even there. And they're like, and my dad eventually goes, the hell? <laughs> he gives something like, what the and then I'm like, oh, geez. And they're like, like, get out. Stop. What, what are you doing? I'm like, no. And uh, oh, yeah, it, it just, I, I don't know. Lost track of time. I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, it got frisky on the couch with my parents feet away. I'm not really sure what was happening there. Kind of so lost track. She, there. So she used the old lay your head on my lap. Yeah, basically. Yeah, up. right. Because like we were both uh, like sitting and then we were both laying like because the couch was wide enough that we could both lay and see the TV. And all of a sudden she kissed me and I didn't even think about it. And then then my parents were like, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, gee, oh, what am I doing? Oh, God. And yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. They. Uh, oh, yeah. It was very awkward. And my mom was like, you know, mouthing to me. What? And I was like, oh, geez, I, yeah, sorry. And then they definitely hated her. And then I was only with her for like, I don't know, a month or two. But then that that ship was over. That was, uh, yep, that was, uh, that one did not pass the test. No. Yeah, and just uh, for the record, it's probably yeah. more likely like this than the big bell. <laughs> hey, just, hey now. You can draw your own analogy there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, so th the other question right now, I don't know if y'all want to get into this, but. Yeah. You know, when when was the first time you found out your son became a hombre? Huh. <laughs> yeah. uh, my, I, I, uh, my mom found out. My mom is the one that found out. Oh, she wow. uh, was doing my um she was doing my laundry and a whole bunch of condoms. Like I forgot and <laughs> I left them in there and she just pulls me to the side. And this is my mother, it's not even my pops. Yeah, having this story like my dad, like afterwards, just, you know, gives me a high five. And he's like, <laughs> I'm glad you're being safe. Right. Like, yeah, look, there you go. That's right. what he told me. So my mom, but my mom is crying because I'm I'm the only boy I got. um, There's five of us and the oh, rest wow. of the girls. Right. So I'm the only boy, been the only boy forever and a day in the family since my son has been born, which is uh, mm -hmm. 36 years now. But anyways. Wow. Right. So she's bawling out and is like, oh, my God, my son, you're going to have, have you always are hanging out with all these different girls. You know, I'm from Long Island. So I was always messing around with a whole bunch of Franklin Square, Oceanside, Island Park girls. And I'm oh, sure. Snowball knows the deal. But anyways. Yeah. So that's my story, man. She found all a whole bunch of condoms and they were Rough Riders. I don't oh, know boy. if you guys remember. I remember the brand Rough Riders. She pulls them out and it's embarrassing as anything because it's your yeah. mom. And she's like, what is this in Spanish? Right. Just flipping out on me <laughs> and then crying. So that was the first time I've ever had a dose of women going from like yelling to crying to being OK. So mm -hmm. but I appreciate right. you guys, man. J.E.T.S. Jets, Jets, Jets. You guys are the best, man. All right. Thank you, Johnny. All right, Dad, Dad, feel free to answer. I don't know what your answer to that question is, but go yeah. ahead, I suppose. I actually believe uh, I became aware because I think you walked into the house and you could have been 17, maybe 16. I don't know. But you walked in with, uh, you know how they say if you you uh, you make that face, your face is going to stick that way. So you walked in the house with the O face because you had just uh, apparently uh sealed the deal closed the contract for the first time uh so uh but your face was still stuck that way ah. uh, yeah and you should anyone should google the o face and uh it's from uh from a movie so yes that's how i knew but uh, uh just uh the tie-in to the uh your mother didn't find your condoms uh but i did notice that you got the rib kind and you turned them <laughs> inside out but anyways wow 
Okay. Well, uh, let's go to one last call. I believe we have here on the line and, uh, that will, wow. What a show this has been. Okay. Well, uh, no, no better way to end obviously than NY jets FL who, who graces us now headphones on full gear. What's yes, up, buddy? Yeah. No buck near Jersey. Uh, First of all, I have a, a, ge- a general question. What, what's a condom? I mean, you know, that that's like little boy playing when you're back in the day, man. You got to have your game on if you're going to go bareback. <laughs> if you're going to go bareback. So, uh, Paul, uh, Paul Sr., like, why didn't you, if, I mean, you didn't uh, stare for a while and say, hey, man, that's my boy going at it. I mean, at least, you know. That's a positive step in the right direction in general, you would think. Yeah. I uh, I realized that split moment that I never wanted to see that. And uh, and then I also, uh, I have a very high set of standards. And uh, yeah, this get one it. was, I get uh, it. she was gross. So. <laughs> oh, oh wow. yeah. If she was better looking, then, then it might have been a little easier to, to stomach, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, hey, a couple more questions if I have a minute. Um, yeah. Did you ever want to date any of Paul's? With all due respect, did you ever want to date? You look at some of Paul's girlfriends and be like, damn, man, when I was, you know, 20, 30 years younger, that would be in my wheelhouse. I mean, <laughs> even, you know, not yeah. not to chew off your arm type, not to chew off your arm type. I'm talking like, damn, man, you know, this is my boy's got something here. Yeah, and so uh, just for the record, my wife is watching in the other room. Oh boy! But despite oh, that fact, she understands. That fact, she understands. Despite that fact, I'll she be one hundred percent honest. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, similar to NFL teams, uh, we have different tastes in uh, in women, <laughs> and uh, the senior standards up until PJ Boy Green met his fiance, his mm-hmm. standards were hey, at hey. a sliding scale lower than mine. Uh, oh, okay. And so, uh, no is the answer to your question. No. <laughs> okay, got you, got you. Um, what? Wow, well, I, I hate to ask a jet question, but I, I'm gonna. I, it's such yeah. a. This is such a great subject that I would like to, uh, you know, continue on this. This. Sure. This. Investigate this, further. This, right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of places to go. Johnny, I'm not a mole, by the way. I'm I'm a jet fan. Um, I appreciate that. So two 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 things. The uh, the comment last night after the King Loski call about Deion Dawkins' belly. Oh, what oh, would yeah. you say he was flabby? Be- oh, that was hysterical. That and and King Loski burying the Patriots and digging them up and burying them again. I had to listen to that again this morning. I was cracking up. But my question is: before you label Will McDonald a bust, Mister uh, Paul Senior, um, the uh, Jermaine Johnson only had two and a half sacks his first year. So you know. He was a little small. He had the raw, the raw ability. I think you got to give Will a little bit, a little more development time, especially with these kind of coaches. That and, and that's there. And this, that's, it may be after uh, after Reddick, uh, the rent a Reddick, rent a Reddick program is over, right? I mm-hmm. would tell to me, uh, we'll know uh, the value of him based on his percentage of playing time in twenty twenty four. And maybe yeah. he'll be able to, we'll be in a situation where like, you know, we're not going to uh, go after Reddick. We're not going to tag him. We're not going to spend a truckload of money because we got Will McDonald for a few more years. So hopefully that's where we go. Uh, my feeling is it's, you know, and it may be the benefit of the players they had, his limited playing time. My only problem with the Will McDonald selection really was it wasn't the need that they should have used their pick for at the time it would have been a pick for a team that was a playoff contender etc etc not a team where the jets were last year that was my biggest right he probably had some potential what he plays this year and what they do going forward there so there's a lot there but yeah i'm not trying to be too hard on him my biggest thing is the jets should not have taken him last year with their number one pick 
Yeah, and I'll just jump in, NY, and just say it's a great call out because I think a lot of people, now that Jermaine had this crazy year that he just did, and there's this overflowing amount of potential, it's like, yeah, we knew he was great for the beginning. A lot of people questioned the hell out of that pick after the two and a half sack thing, saying a lot of the same things we're saying about Will. No, it doesn't guarantee Jermaine. You got to give him a lot of credit from year one to year two to transform his body and dedicate it. And shout out to the One Jets Drive crew who covered a lot of his stuff at his home base as he was training and going crazy. So there's no guarantee we'll have, we'll have that same jump but it's a good call out to say hey you know what that Jermaine guy a lot of people said that and then boom he was able to lift we'll see if uh, Will can do the same thing yep and uh so Paul Sr. was was Paul Jr.'s uh lady type was she just squatty and wide or like what why what was she white or like what was I know you met her in Latina which I did actually but um and what kind of type did Paul Paul Jr. have? Or was it a myriad of uh, you know the rainbow of of, of colors and sizes and other yeah. things? Yeah, it was. I would say it was a myriad. Uh, his type was the one that would say <laughs> yes for the most part. Uh, he had a few oh. that were butterface, if you know what that phrase oh. means. Oh um, yeah, say yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so. Not that I would know. Uh, it was the one. Yeah, of course, there was the ones that would say yes. That that was his type. Wow. Woo. All right, I yeah. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I can continue <laughs> if you like, but I mean, yeah, you, I think I think we've 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 covered all the bases here. But uh, pleasure <laughs> yeah. speaking with you both. Uh, what? Uh, that's all I have for today, Paul. You have a good. You guys have a great weekend. Yeah, I, I love that. NY Jets FL. Okay. Wow. All right. We got into some territory there. Okay. The two wrap ups, Dad. We had two YouTube super chats in. So we'll use those and that will end the show. Uh, we have uh, E Boogie uh, 156, which, by the way, thank you so much for the YouTube super chat. It helps us uh, keep the show going. <clears throat> so we appreciate it. Uh, he says, Let's effing go, boys. The Jets' chances of winning went up by 25%. Agree? Question mark. Yes or no? What a great day. All right. I, I don't know if we could put a percentage on it of, say, 25% or 20%. I, I would just say bluntly, they got a hell of a lot better. Hassan Reddick, who they added, as my father said earlier, is significantly better than Jadavion Clowney, is significantly better than Shaq Barrett, and also cost him a draft pick. So it should, it should they th- this player should be significantly better for the price that they paid, both financially speaking and also draft pick-wise. He is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. ESPN put up the stat over the last four years. He is fourth in the league in sacks, and you, the other names are Miles Garrett, T.J. Watt. Like you got some amazing, unbelievable names. Yeah, Micah Parsons. I forgot that. I guess third guy on that list. But you know, Hassan Reddick had four straight double-digit sack seasons, so he's been spectacular. Um, so I, I don't know if I could put a percentage on it, but they just got dramatically better, and they added a primo guy. But uh, Dad, yeah, I, I would say they definitely improved. Uh, I do think that he's going to make a significant impact. And no one would have thought that when we lost um, Huff, that our defense would be better a few weeks later. So, I, yeah, the, it's it may be that his ability to get to the quarterback, and I predicted that he might be in the running for defensive player of the year. Yeah, uh, I think their chances definitely went up 25%. I'm not sure. It might be a game, worth a game or two. I could say that. Which, by the way, could be the dramatic difference of potential winning the AFC East or not, uh, depending on health. Uh, another YouTube super chat coming in. Golden Robert uh, sent in, hey, this trade better mean offensive skill player in the first round wide receiver tight end. Again, I still think, <clears throat> excuse me, offensive line is on the table. Me personally, this is how I look at it. And I don't know how realistic this is. My top five guys, I told you guys before, that are on the board at 10 that I'm sticking and picking for the most part outside of this fifth guy, which I'll explain. One of the top three receivers, that's Neighbors, Adunze, or Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt, or Brock Bowers. If Brock Bowers is the only one that's on a, on the board, which is probably the most likely of those, I try to maybe trade back a few slots and then still take him. But if they just love Brock Bowers, then you just stick and pick. So, uh, yeah, mostly it's wide receiver tight end. But if Joe Alt's there, that one gets me to kind of bend. It, but you can't really go wrong if it's Olu Fashanu or one of these other offensive tackles because you, you give yourself the premium insurance now and also the hopefully the long-term left tackle in the future. But I don't want them to just take the seventh offensive lineman for no reason. I'm willing to do it if the right guy is there. Pop? Yeah, they're going to go to their boards, the breakdown, the value of the player at the pick, right? I agree, the weapon. But – Again, 
it's got to be the right weapon. It's got to be the right pick or look for the opportunity, right? And so get their bang for the buck. Um, I would like to see an offensive player there. Most of their other needs uh, get outside of, let's say, Joe Alt, uh, would, yeah. will be filled later and better filled later in the draft. So, uh, but yes, I don't think a wide receiver that gets the right rating will be available at 10, in my opinion. But Brock okay. Bauer is definitely worth a uh, number 10 pick. Okay. Uh, all right, Dan. I, 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 there's, it's up to you. <clears throat> there is one last caller on the line. Do you want to bring them through? Uh, yep, we can do real quick because uh, your okay. mother's busy making uh, a phenomenal breakfast. Oh, so I have to go this eat. is, uh, this is terrible. Also, I see Johnny also threw in a super chat. What's an O-Face? The chat needs a tutorial. Absolutely. There is no tutorial necessary. Uh, you either know it or you don't. It's an exclusive club. You either you know what that YouTube, means. You'll find it. Oh, yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, that's not a, that's not a work appropriate thing. So I'd probably, in the, 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 yeah, I got to take a quick bathroom break and go, uh, you know, explore on your own perhaps, but, uh, no tutorial necessary, but Johnny, thank you for bringing it to our attention. All right, let's get to the phone lines. We've got one last caller. Uh, it is uh, bill joining us on the line. What's up, bill? Hey, good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Good. Boy Green, when I saw that picture of you as a young boy with the, the dark complexion and everything, first thing I thought was whether or not you were part Latino, and now I've had that question answered. Yes. So you and uh, Buffalo Jet fan are both part Puerto Rican. I'm full. Oh, Puerto I didn't know Rican. Buffalo was Puerto Rican. Yes, wow. Yes, okay. Wow. Puerto Rican. Okay. I, we'll have to explore that. I was DMing him the other day yeah, to, to yeah. collab. We haven't done a collab in a while. I'll have to, we'll have to investigate those waters. Yes. Yeah, so all we need now is for V-Man to wake up and call this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy with uh, a lot of the moves that JD has been making. I know that, uh, you know, he's under the gun, but uh, he's definitely worked very smart in the way he's done his free agent signings and the contracts. Uh, obviously, he still has a lot of uh, contracts to rework, uh, restructure, et cetera, with regards to the current team. Uh, so that uh, it gives, uh, definitely it gives him more flexibility next year uh, once, uh, you know, we, we can uh, be a success this season and carry it forward. Um, so all these one-year contracts have, are a good thing uh, because uh, obviously we don't know if some of these guys want to stay a while. We don't know if they're still going to have, you know, be the quality players that we want uh, from them. Uh, so, uh, you know, very excited. Um, uh, I, I feel sorry for you, uh, Senior, with regards to the current Cowboys teams. Because I grew up knowing the uh, better teams, like with the stall box and uh, the lilies and, and the pews and so on. I remember those teams very well. Um, and, of course, the Steelers of old. Oh, my God. What, what great teams in the 70s, especially. The Vikings, the Rams. It, it was oh, yeah. a fantastic time. Purple people eater steel curtain. Yes. Oh yeah, those were eras, baby. Ab yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Paul, have you a uh, senior rather? Have you ever felt uh, excited for the Jets in any of their seasons? Uh, I thought uh, the two times it went to the AFC Championship game, uh, there was some excitement there, you know. Good. And you know, and I'll probably one of the few people that thinks that uh, you know when we were poking around for. I would bring I bring Rex back, right? He brought some pop. Yeah, pop I agree. Jets. I um, agree. So, yeah, no, I've enjoyed the time. And then you know I've lived through uh, taking you know credit where credit was due. I was in on shift work at the at the uh, my job, but I did get to watch Sanchez's finest hour as a Jet that he's world famous for on Thanksgiving evening, uh, ah, the butt right. fumble, but. <laughs> uh, I, I hear that one. I hear that one. Um, uh, I grew up also with this feeling that uh, I've always been excited if a New York team gets into playoffs, regardless of whether the team I root for or not. So, um, for example, in addition to being a Jets fan, I'm a Mets fan, Rangers fan, and Knicks fan. But if the Nets make it to the playoffs or the Giants make it to the I get just as excited because New York. I don't believe in uh, knocking down the players of uh, 
the other New York teams. I think that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Very respectful. We're, we're New York fans, which is what we have in common, regardless of the team you root for. And we should always uh, uh, join together to root for those teams to, to make it and win those championships. Hey, I appreciate it. I would just say this. You will find no bigger Giants fan than me than those last two Super Bowls. Thank you very much. Without Eli Manning's <laughs> service, Tom Brady would be nine Super Bowls rings in. So, Eli Manning, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, we, um, and with regards to Belichick and um, and Brady, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just tired of hearing that one would not be anything without the other. Uh, both of them came at the same time, and they benefited one another. They were both great together, and I'm tired of just hearing that, oh, Belichick is nothing without Brady. Brady is nothing without Belichick um, or any of these other arguments. Both of them came to the Patriots, and the Patriots were willing to spend the money that they had to to find the best talent and so on to uh, make it possible for Brady to develop into the great quarterback that he is. And the well, if you can stomach it, I would say watch the documentary that just came out on Apple TV, the 10 part series of the Patriots. So, again, if you can stomach it, seeing all the Patriots winning, <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, but it was compelling to hear that dynamic. And they uh, they gave the documentary people their full video archive to use anything and everything they wanted, which is not atypical for uh, those kind of documentaries and stuff to have that kind of access. So, I thought mm -hmm. it gave some really cool original stuff. So, uh, I just finished that uh, a week or two ago. Very compelling. I remember when the uh, Jets Dolphins were the rivalry before New England became the big thing, right. you know, but uh, Marino and Brady, oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I only wish that O'Brien had worked out to be the yes. great quarterback that uh, Marino did. I mm. just felt that, uh, you know, he just made too many of the same mistakes that we would actually say Zach makes holding on to the ball too long and sometimes mm -hmm. making the wrong decision at the wrong time. Yeah. And that's yeah. frustrating. Yeah. I do like, I love Kenny O. Unfortunately, Marino goes after, and then that's what his career ends up being defined by, unfortunately. But he had some pop moments that, unfortunately, Zach didn't have in the same light. So Ken O'Brien doesn't get the same love, I'm sure, that he would maybe get at a different organization because of everything he accomplished and the Dan Marino draft. But nonetheless, uh, hopefully better times ahead here, Bill. Rogers, I hope so. His team and everything else. It, uh, it uh, should be a lot of fun. Thanks for calling in, Bill. It was a pleasure. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. Right. You too. Right. You too. You too. Uh, there he is. Uh, Bill joining us here on Boy Green Daily. All right, Dad, that was uh, that was the longest episode in history, but I'll let you get to your breakfast. Sounds great over there. Wonderful. Dandy. I don't know if you guys can ship any over here. I'm freaking starving over here. I'm not, I'm not sure it'll be any left over, but yeah, we got to uh, get over. I think your mom just took off her flip-flop, which is not always good for me. I'm a... Uh, mm. That uh, when they start taking off their flip flop and then they poison their hand like a like a <laughs> Jason with a kitchen knife. So yeah, that's a the little Hispanic thing for people who don't know. Uh, you get the throwing flip flop. I want to avoid that at all costs. Well, Father, what what a wild show, crazy good stuff, and uh, we'll have to do this again next week. Keep it uh, keep the train rolling. All right, great, happy Easter, everybody. Yes, uh, yes. Pleasure. Yep. Happy Easter, everybody. And thank you to the 800 people that are watching live right now. Again, make sure you guys like the video, hit subscribe. That's a free way to contribute on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you next time for Boy Green Daily tomorrow morning at 730.